So I decided to uh, test a little bit more. This is a quick follow-up on the last video I made. Um, if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it first. It informs this one. Um, as you can see here, though, I've made a change. I've got an extra capacitor. I've sold it onto the board there. It's currently out of circuit. You can see this, uh, this fly lead hanging off the end. It's not um, connected on both sides. So it's as if it's not in there at the moment. And I've also set up to measure current flow again. So you can see on the meter, we are in that fault mode where we're pulling 18 odd milliamps, 17, 18 milliamps fluctuating. You can also see what's happening to the battery voltage on the power rail for that. You might've noticed just then we had a big dip on VCC2. So the micro is clearly doing some weird things at the moment. Uh, if I power cycle this, it, um, you can see we've dropped the power off. If I connect this again back on, uh, we'll watch the current that goes through its power up and never goes to sleep. So we're in that fault mode. You notice too, I'm also feeding at 1.2 volts. So that anyone that still says this is an issue because I didn't use a rechargeable, uh, well, yeah, this is at rechargeable voltage levels and it's in that fault mode. So what's interesting is when I, in the last video, we noticed how noisy the power supply was on the, um, onboard power supply where it boosts the voltage to the 2.2. If I take a capacitor and put it on there on the output of that power supply and put that in circuit to clean up that noise and make it smoother, like this is just a random capacitor I grabbed. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's got a bit of capacity in it. And we connect that and put it back in circuit. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Right, I think that's right. So it's back in circuit. And you can see already the graph looks beautiful. Um, we look at the current draw, we've dropped down because we're now in sleep. So the fault doesn't seem to be a firmware problem as I suspected. It's a circuit board problem, a circuitry problem. IKEA have not put enough power filtering on the output of that buck boost converter. And the output is actually too noisy. It's causing the microcontroller to do weird things. Um, unfortunately, this is not something that can be fixed with a firmware update. They actually need to replace the product. I don't know if they already have if they've released another revision of these devices i've had these for about six months now um, they might have released an updated version so maybe someone can pull one of them apart and see if it's the same as mine but at this point it looks like yeah return your device and get a new one or get a different brand because this um, fault is not fixable through software